Hey, what's up? You got time for a beer? It's New Brew Thursday. Uh, this is Jake. Today, I have this uh, this one here. El Ligero. It's a Mexican lager with fresh lime from Griffin Claw Brewery. Uh, or Griffin Claw Brewing Company, I'm sorry. Uh, it says, so fresh and so clean on the fancy bicycle there. It's a good song. Outcast, if I remember correctly. Uh, brewed and bottled by Griffin Claw Brewing Company in Birmingham, Michigan. 4.5% alcohol by volume. 10 IBUs. Should be pretty good. Nice, light, clean. Because that's what Mexican lagers are supposed to be. Super fancy and whatnot. Although, if you've ever had Corona... Um, because of the clear bottles, Corona generally tastes skunked. Because that's what that's what oxidization does to a beer. Makes it taste skunky. But this guy should be clear. Uh, nice little head on it. Hopefully I've got enough room in this guy. I might not, though. Well, I will once the head dies down a little bit. Uh, but nice head. Very clear, like it's supposed to be. But it tastes a little bit like lime, but mostly like, well, I mean, it's a Mexican lager. So um, around here at the very least, you kind of expect it to be a little bit skunky, which I don't know about you guys, but I dislike skunky beers. Not as much as I dislike the taste of the Belgian yeast, which is really dumb of me because there's a lot of really good Belgians out there. Um, and Belgian beers, I just haven't had one that I like enough to get over the taste of that yeast. I, I believe it's the yeast anyway. Saison's, Belgian's a little bit more so. Man, there's just that little bit. And I know that there's not really going to be any, uh, any yeast on the bottom of this because while this is... That is the way this ferments. It's not really the way this ferments. Uh, it's a bottom fermenter, but since it's so cold, um, it doesn't really float to the top. And just take a look, make sure you guys can see the, the cool artwork on the can, because it's very cool on that sticker there. I bet you could get that at the brewery if you went there. It's one of those places that I should probably get to eventually here, I'm trying to decide where I'm going next. Um, I haven't been any place recently, because I just got off of thirds and... Uh, lots of working and I haven't had a chance to go anyplace recently. Um, I was thinking I might go down to Elysian Brewing Company. It's down in Lansing, but I also might go over to um, Loggers Brewing Company with, with an O, not an A, like Mexican lager. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, should be light, clean, a little bit limey. Um, malt forward almost crackery which is good because that's what it should be um not quite not eh, there's not quite a corn flavor to it but almost which would make sense for mexican lager too I remember trying to make a uh a mexican lager when i well no not even a mexican lager just a mexican beer kind of thing uh, i made it with a uh with a rep recipe that i had for a uh a honeydale and instead of putting in honey, I put in a bunch of agave syrup and a bunch of uh, of dried peppers. And it was amazing. But instead of just leaving it how it was, when I re uh, when I re-racked it uh, for just a little bit more conditioning time, I uh, I put it on, I poured it over some key limes, and then I think it ruined it. So far as what I thought it was going to be at first, it ended up being really good. But I think it would have been better without the limes. Add your own, add your own stinking lime if you want that. Um, but yeah, this reminds me of like Corona with the lime. Let's think the guy up in there. Um, reminds me of actually that beer that I made, the, the not honey. Well, I, I, it's essentially a tequila ale. But it was pretty good. 
made in Birmingham, so the Michigan glass is appropriate. I should have gotten the one that was slightly bigger so that it fit more stuff in there, but it's fit up pretty well. Pretty well. There's nothing left in the can, so that's good. Um, story that this reminds me of. Man, this reminds me of college, just in general. Um, actually, it's Thursday, so I mean, it's New Brew Thursday, but also it, it and this is new to me, more or less. I may or may not have had one on my last day off, uh, but also new. I haven't checked it in yet, so it's new. Um, also, Thursday nights are 40 nights. Um, I just read something recently that was super sad for me because it spent so much time in my college career. Uh, I, I recently read that whomever it is that owns all of those super awesome malt liquor beverages have decided that they're going to discontinue stuff like Mickey's and Old English. Uh, there's another one in there. They're like, like Colt 45 might have been in there. Just like all those classic 40 ounce bottles, they're, they're doing away with them, which is super sad. How are college kids going to play Edward 40 hands? Are they going to have to do it with Bud Light? Gross. I mean, I suppose it's a lot easier to do it like that than it would be to power hour that stuff, but also very doable. It's only 80 ounces of stuff. It's going to take you an hour. Hopefully you don't have to take a leak in that hour because you're going to have to smash those bottles off somehow. I just never got how you open the second bottle. Although you could just start with them both open, I suppose. They're hard to do. You definitely have to have somebody else do it for you, though. For sure. Um, for those of you that might not know about 40 Night, um, when I was in college, it was a while ago. I mean, I graduated in 2008, but my first year was 1998. So, I mean, you can do the math on that. I, uh, I claimed to be a full-time student the whole time. I wasn't ever a half-time student, but I, there were a couple of semesters that only had 10 credit hours, for sure. Um, definitely the easier way to go through college. Nowadays, you can't afford to do college that way. Oh, shit, people can barely afford to go to college. It's so super expensive. It's stupid. Um, but yeah, 10 years in college, I I never failed the class. There was one that I was going to fail. Uh, zoology, like introduction to zoology is not my thing. Definitely made it so that I was not a biology major. Um, but I know enough about, a little bit about enough things in science to have an integrated science minor. Um, like all kinds of stuff. Like I was better at biology than I was at, actually I was a lot better at like micro and uh, the micro is tough too, but not as tough as zoology. Micro and uh, actually I was really good at, at geology, but that was a summer class. So that was kind of I don't want to say a blow-off class because I learned a lot of stuff in that, but also it was more fun. Uh, my bio biology class was super fun too. Um, and then um, I had a uh, a botany class that was super fun too. And right after that, I went disc golfing someplace and they had sensitive plants, which I had seen in class, but never in the wild. And they had them on the disc golf course, growing wild all over in, I think we were in Texas. I think that was uh, Orange, Texas, Louisiana. We were driving from, we flew into Houston. We were driving to Lake Charles. Uh, someplace in there, there was a disc golf, there was a disc golf course. There is not a disc golf course any there, there anymore. Uh, it got taken away in a hurricane, which is disappointing because there was a really cool picture that I got of a flame in the middle of the day coming up out of a smokestack uh, but we were driving and it was coming up out of my finger at least I think that's how my brother took the picture because I was driving and he was on his laptop trying to get where these uh where this uh disc golf course was on his laptop uh stealing wi-fi from people in and around the Houston area I mean borrowing wi-fi from people in and around the Houston area uh, um, yeah, so anyway, 40 night, it's a big deal. When I was, when I was younger, they used to have a, uh, a, um, a sale on 40s, like two for $3, two for $4, something like that. 
at the store on Thursday nights. So I had a friend, Laura, that, that she was a tuba player. Uh, there's more of them, so you can't tell me which, you, there's no way you could tell me which one exactly. But she would go and buy, and buy some 40s for all of us people that would find it more difficult to procure a 40 uh, during the week. Because um, she was awesome, and we were young and didn't have a lot of money, and things like that. I was old when I went to college, 19. But I didn't drink that first year. No, that's not true. I didn't drink till the end of that first year. So I, I, I was older than, I was older than 19 that first time. In Canada, for sure Canada, right? Um, so 40 night started out when I was a freshman. Uh, and we would get 40s. Usually everybody would be like, oh, how many 40s do you want? Oh, I'll have two. Because, you know, four bucks, not that big a deal. Uh, they, they ended up being more than that, and it wasn't a deal by the time I graduated college. Mostly because the store had burned down by that point in time. Um, but by then, 40 night was a tradition for the tubas. Uh, we called them union meetings for a while. Uh, the tuba union symbol here um eventually once once they saw once my brother got there and they uh, sorry about that once my brother got there and they saw his shirt they were like hey can we get shirts like that i've been thinking recently about making other ones like black ones but like black and gray what so like the black t-shirts and the the symbols gray and i think they'll look badass uh i got a go around and see if anybody wants to make those for me. But I don't know how many people would want one of those. Uh, I'll, I'll check that out here sometime soon, probably this Thursday. Uh, share this with people that might care. Um, yeah, so it, it ended up hopping around a lot. Like it'd go to different people's, different people's um, apartments. We had it, at a house in town for a while, because that's where Laura was. It was there, or it was at um, at another place in Western Islands. They actually had one of the places with the balcony, which was kind of cool. Um, I mean, I think every place in at Western Islands now has a balcony, but then it was super crappy apartments, and theirs was special because it had a balcony and looked right out over the the. Uh, the marching band field, which was awesome. Uh, not as cool then as it would be now, but different stuff now, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I had it a couple times at, let's see, did I have, I don't think I ever had it at my place when I was a sophomore or junior, um, and I don't know how big of a deal it was then either, because my place would have been a sweet place to have that as a sophomore or junior. Um, cause I, uh, where Dog Central is now, uh, used to be the Uppercut. I lived above the Uppercut. Um, there was a place there that cut hair and then there was like an insurance something or another in there. And now it's, just, I think it's just Dog Central. I haven't ever been to Dog Central, but I know the place and that's where it was. And I lived above that. Uh, that would have been a great place because it was a gigantic room. Uh, we had some bomb ass parties there. Um, cause then I was hanging around mostly with baseball players cause across the hall there were baseball players and I lived with, when I first started living there, I lived with two of my roommates, um, from, from the dorms and another guy that lived down the hall who was a baseball player. Um, and then I ended up living with just one of those roommates the second year that I lived there, although it was supposed to be the other three people that were there the year before, uh, but two of them decided to leave the university, so it was really just the two of us, and we had a friend who was a baseball player who, uh, well, actually, we had 
two friends that were baseball players that ended up living there. Um, but the one was the guy's sister and her husband, well, now husband, but boyfriend at the time, fiance at the time. And then her brother would stay over every once in a while when they weren't, when they weren't around. Um, but yeah, that never happened there. Not that I can remember anyway. I had a birthday party there once. That was pretty... Now that I think back on it, it was probably pretty awful. But, I mean, it was fun at the time. It's really super fun to have a kegger going on and being like, Happy birthday! It's a great pickup line. And they're like, the, the ladies are like, It's not my birthday. But it's my birthday. Mostly I just got a happy birthday. And I didn't get very many hugs because I was, you know... Five five and super awkward. Didn't realize at that point in time that I was kind of badass. Um, but that's cool. I figured it out since then. Actually, I figured that out when I moved to to uh, mm, Timber Creek was a start. I think I had one of those there once, um, and. That's where we wrote the first uh, the first list of tuba demands. Uh, we wrote it on a beer mirror and whiteboard marker first. And then I was like, wait, I have crayons and we have a uh, we, we have a uh, um, 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 a, a box from a case of beer. Let's write it on the box of the case of beer. And it'll be hilarious to write this out on there and we can take it and read it to people at the at the band banquet and it'll be hilarious. And well, it was hilarious. Dr. Badger thought so too. And then they gave that stupid thing away. I wonder if he still got that because the Hofer Lunchbox is still one of my favorite things that we wrote on there. Tubas with capes, white shoes. No berets was one that I wish would have been on there, but I don't think was. But we could have taken a Hofer lunchbox off of there because eventually he got a very nice girl. Um, yeah. He moved out there north of town, and that was the spot for the 40 night. Uh, mostly we'd... It was me and Sheba, and uh, Toby mostly, but shifted through a little bit. And then me and Johnny B. <sighs> that was a good time. We had some we had some bangers out there. It was lots of people. It was a good time. Lighting off fireworks and shit. That was a terrible idea, by the way. Oh, mine, I'll admit that. Don't light off mortars from a from a porch, from not even a porch, from a patio. Terrible idea, no matter the angle. Awful idea. Because usually that idea comes at like two in the morning, and it's not worth it. It's not. She's loud. Um. Yeah, so 40 night, in a nutshell. Maybe. I don't know if I told you anything about it at all. Maybe a little bit of, uh, a little bit of history of it. Which is cool. I mean, and then a beer. And that's what it's really about. Uh, part of the reason why this New Brew Thursday is kind of one of my favorite things to do. Because it's like having a party back in the day. Alright, just about done. I have a, uh, a quote from James Baldwin. He's an author, activist. And I like what he says. So anyway, here we go. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. That's James Baldwin. Um, this was a good one. I think it was probably pretty long. Couldn't tell you for sure because... 
turned off on my watch, so hopefully it's recording on here. It'd be terrible if it wasn't. Um, you can find me if you would like to. If you want to see what I'm doing, what I'm up to. Um, I'm on Untapped. Uh, hopefully you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, Twitter and Instagram on those guys too. All at Jake underscore 69. Um, any one of those that you want to look at. Untapped, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Um, Jake Hughes on Facebook. If you'd like. So, I'll see you next time, if you got time for a beer.